You worried about your roof flying off? Most people don't think about that, but that's one of the elements we need to think about with building. Normally we think about weighing things down, but stopping things blowing away is also one of the considerations when we're designing and installing roof trusses, especially in Wellington. You don't want your roof to peel off and blow away. And so what we have to do is tie the trusses to the top plate, which is tied to the studs, which is tied to the bottom plate, which is tied to the floor. So you've got to make sure that the very top piece of roof is tied to the very bottom piece of foundation. It's because that pressure from the wind is huge and you can open a door and you can create this huge pressure inside. The wind doesn't need enough pressure to rip the entire roof off at once. What happens is if you find a weak point and that peels up, it's like when you rip open a can. Once that first layer peels back, the whole thing will peel back like you're opening a can of classic Kiwi dip. Basically, you don't want that to happen to your roof. We do a bunch of things. We do brackets, we do tie downs, we do lots of CPC 40s and 80s, and we follow the trust plan. Every single section in New Zealand will have a wind zone from low to extra high and then beyond that we've got ECD. ECD means Specific Engineer Design. So those houses we did up in Akrotara were actually in what's called an ECD wind zone. They're beyond the normal wind zones. They get huge gusts whipping along the tops of the hills. We need to get the engineer to do a specific engineer design on the roof to make sure that we were accounting for the wind gusts that were coming through in that area. So we engaged the engineer to do a wind speed test on those sites. There's a lot more complications at the design phase. There's more consideration about the shape of your roof, the overhangs, the pitch. All of those things go towards calculating how likely is your roof going to blow off. It's one of those occasions where you don't want to raise the roof. Speaking of raising, have you clicked subscribe? Because I want to raise my subs to 10k and you can help. First and foremost, we can't do trusses on site anymore. Nowadays it's all done in a factory, it's designed on a computer, it has to be pressed together with a hydraulic press, making sure that it's the right amount of compaction. Roof trusses are designed for a couple of things. It's all about your load. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean like, you've got to spread the roof load along and down to the walls. The other thing to remember is trusses are not unique to building. You'd actually see them in a lot of bridges. Imagine an old railway bridge and it's the triangle shape that goes across and the strength is actually in the webbing or the triangles. So a couple of types of trusses. We've got a single truss, which is a single triangular truss. These are the most common ones that we use as roofs. So imagine you've got a single triangle and then you've got the webbing in it. So if we just ran one piece of timber, it'd be reasonably flimsy and it would have a lot of weight being forced on the middle of that. By putting in the webbing, it gives the whole structure strength. So the triangle with the webbing is much stronger than all of the elements on their own. So you're then turning a bunch of individual pieces of timber into one structural element. So a single truss is doing one job, going from here to here and carrying one load. Whereas a girder truss, this girder truss here, not only does it go from point A to point B, but along the way it has a bunch of other roof trusses butting into it. It's catching the end of a single truss and then spreading that to the walls and down to the load bearing elements of the build. Now there's some other cool things we can do with trusses. We can do what's called a scissor truss, where you have the angle of the outside roof, and instead of the inside being flat, the inside is like at a 15 degree pitch. So a common one is we have a 25 degree roof pitch, and then we have a 15 degree internal. What that means is that we can then put the jib on the internal angle. It's an easy way of forming a cathedral or a pitch ceiling on the inside, like you're doing two jobs with one truss. Another truss system we use again on Jeff's rural dream home. In the garage, we had an attic void in his truss. So the center of the truss was missing, essentially it's a void, so that means we have to beef up the bottom cord and we have to do extra webbing in the sides, but they can calculate the strengths of the webbing on the side to be enough to do the same job as if it was a single truss. That's a low cost way to create an attic space void. 
instead of rafters, you can do sloping flat. It's a rectangle, but it's on a slope. And it goes up there and you've got your webbing in there. That would be another common truss. That could be a common way to deal with a mono pitch. Again, it depends on the span, the height, a bunch of those things. 